This is question number one of exercise 5.2 from the chapter continuity and differentiability. Now the question is differentiate with respect to x sine of x square plus 5. We actually going to solve this question by two methods and firstly we are going to solve this question by substitution method. Okay. Now to solve this question by substitution method, we use this result that d by dx of f of t, where t is again a function of x is equal to d by dt of f of t into d by dx of t. Okay, so right now, simply see what is written here. And as we do the question, each and everything will become very clear. Now we have to differentiate sine of x square plus 5 with respect to x. That is we have to calculate d by dx of sine of x square plus 5. So first of all d upon dx of sine x is equal to cos x. So we cannot write sine of x square plus 5 directly as equal to cos of x square plus 5 and we say that it is answer because we are differentiating this composite function. Okay, if it, is, if it was written only x or in other words, if we have to differentiate only sin x, then this formula is applicable. Otherwise, this formula is not applicable if x is replaced by any other value, for example, x square plus 5, right? So always understand, always make it a point that this formula is applicable exactly when sin of x is given. Now to differentiate sin of x square plus 5 with respect to x, what we do, we are going to substitute, we are going to assume that x square plus 5 is equal to t. Okay, so now we have to differentiate d by dx of sin t. Okay, so I've said that I'm going to explain how we are going to apply this result when we are going to solve this question. So it is like this, that we know that d by dx of sin x is equal to cos x, so d by dx of sin t would be equal to cos t. Okay. So we are going to first differentiate sin t with respect to t and multiply with d by dx of t like this. Okay. And further we can write d by dx of sin of x square plus 5 as equal to cos of x square plus 5 into d by dx of x square plus 5 because t is t was equal to x square plus 5. Okay. Further we can differentiate x square plus 5 very easily because differentiation of x square plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 0 and this is done because we know that d by dx of x to the power of n is equal to n into x to the power of n minus 1 d by dx of constant is equal to 0 so d by dx of x square would be equal to 2 into x to the power of 2 minus 1 or simply 2x okay and further we can write this as equal to 2x into cos of x square plus 5 which is my required answer now the same question can be solved by chain rule okay and in chain rule what we have to do first of all first of all we have to read the function so the function is sine of x square plus 5 so this means that the function consists of two that function first is sine and second is x square plus 5. Okay, so because we are reading sine first and then x square plus 5, so we are going to first differentiate sine and then x square plus 5. And in chain rule we apply, uh, we differentiate like this, that d upon dx of sine of x square plus 5 is equal to, first of all, d by dx of sine is equal to cos. So d by dx of sine of x square plus 5 would be equal to cos of x square plus 5 into d by dx of x square plus 5. Okay, so, you, so what you have to do, you have to differentiate the function which is coming first. So differentiation of sine was cos and all the terms inside the bracket are written with it. And the terms inside the bracket are further differentiated with respect to x and multiplied. Okay, and further differentiation of x square plus 5 would be equal to 2x plus 0, which we have done. So this would be equal to 2x into cos of x square plus 5. Okay, so you have seen that we can differentiate this function sine of x square plus 5 by two methods. Okay, but the chain rule is much important 
because it requires less steps less thinking has to be done less written work has to be done and uh, such type of function will appear more frequently in your uh, uh, exercises in as you are going to progress in differential calculus so make it a point that you try to solve more and more question by the chain rule okay so right now in this exercise i'm trying to give the solution of the function by using both the methods so that the concepts become clear okay friends thanks for watching my video to watch more of these super videos and for the latest updates subscribe and like the videos on these channels on youtube hsk shiksha and math help by hsk thank you